Well, Toronto-based startup Kepler Communications launched 10 optical data relay satellites over the weekend. The company's relay network enables data processing and analyzing directly in space. Here to talk about it is Mina Mitri, the CEO of Kepler Communications. Mina, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, just quickly, let's talk a little bit more about what these satellites will actually do. Yeah, so these satellites, they'll go up into low Earth orbit, which is roughly 650 kilometers from the surface of the Earth, and they'll be able to route data between themselves, between third-party assets in real time. And so the big difference that we're bringing to the world right now is the ability for this data to come back in real time so it can help everything from first responders get access to wildfire detection information so they can effectively manage and deploy their resources all the way through def to defense organizations who want to do in orbit processing so they can better understand you know what is their situational awareness so they could do intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance all around the world and when you talk about real like is it literally instantaneous the information that's right yeah so the norm for most space missions today, it might take them 30 minutes to three hours to get information back down to Earth, where when we bring up this network and it's fully operational, data will be flowing at 700 milliseconds. So it's as instantaneous as information gets exchanged on the traditional internet we have here on Earth. And how is that possible? Is this technology you've developed? So this is a this is the advent or a confluence of few technologies that have come into existence and stuff that we've developed in house. So the the core enabler to the work that we're doing today are laser links that we're using to beam light between different satellites within our network and to third party satellites and eventually back down to the ground. So building off the momentum we had in 2023 where we tested these laser links that are able to communicate with an aircraft, with another spacecraft or with the ground, we're able to move this data in through space, much like a mesh network here on Earth, so that it eventually finds its way back down to Earth in real time. That's the real core enabler. Uh, and apart from that, it's also the great satellite capability and satellite building capability we've developed here in Toronto in our factory. And uh, and you literally are, are these lasers, you're actually the information is in the laser itself, in the beam? Yeah, so yeah, you got it. So the, the laser beam is very much like fiber optic cable here on Earth. But in space, because we've got the void of space and it's a deep, dark vacuum, we can shine lasers between our satellites without needing a physical cable to connect them between one another. Uh, it's a really hard problem, though, to solve because we're pointing a laser pointer to an object that's roughly the size of a quarter, sitting 6,500 kilometers away, and we have to hold that laser pointer steady. So that's the core intellectual problem property that we've developed here inside the business is how do you build, deploy, and operate a satellite that can hold that laser pointer or that laser marker really, really still. And now uh, you've got 10 up in space. Uh, are you making money off these now? Yeah, we are. So we are live deploying applications with a few of our uh, marquee customers. Yesterday, we announced one of our uh, key customers, a company out of Germany called Aurora Tech, where we are supporting them to do live uh, wildfire detection and wildfire monitoring that has a ton of applications, especially with the big wildfire season we experienced last year here in Canada. And uh, it services national and international governments with the same. We also have a few orbital data center customers. So on board all of our satellites are a wide uh, series of GPUs and CPUs that are used for doing on-orbit processing that allows you know financial institutions and other government type customers to be able to process and route their data in orbit for uh, using of that orbital data center so we have a number of different use cases and applications and we'll be continuing to announce them over the coming months now are these the data centers that Elon Musk has talked about uh, the space data centers I mean they're they're not very big these satellites but are, are how much can how much information can you store up there yeah, so these satellites are roughly 300 kilograms in mass or 600 pounds. Those are pretty beefy spacecraft uh, when you when you think about them. They're also operating in a sun synchronous orbit that is uh, dawn dusk. So when you, you hear a lot of the, the mainstream media communication today, the dawn dusk orbit is really an orbit that has a ton of sunlight in it, which allows us to generate an enormous amount of power, but also keep our satellites a little bit smaller uh, relative to what an end uh, data center might look like. Uh, the, the key advantage here is these data centers are all networked to one another 
better so we could distribute compute resources between all of our different satellites uh, when a workload comes in. So if somebody needs something to be operated in space, we'll decide which of the satellites will run that workload. And we have many, many different GPUs across all these satellites that are real-time connected to allow us to run those workloads. Okay, and now uh, you've ra you raised two hundred million, I believe, was the number, uh, or close to that. To where are you looking for another? Are you looking for more funds, or are you thinking of an IPO? Yeah, we've raised over three hundred million U.S. in capital to date, and uh, we uh, have had the benefit of really supportive investors throughout this time period. We'll be continuing to raise additional capital through the coming year, just on the basis of expanding our network, adding additional data sources, and really building out what we think is uh, the first of its kind of a cloud-like environment where new space missions can be developed, deployed, and run instantaneously. And do you see yourself going public? Uh, in the long-term future, I think we see a lot of private companies staying private more so these days with uh, ready access to private investors, the ability for them to really focus on and on concentrate on their core mission and their core differentiator without the, the public markets really challenging the, the, the work that they're doing. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep the company private for as long as we can. And just uh, one last question with, uh, with government talking about defense and spending increasing. Do you see, where do you see yourself fitting in with that? Yeah, so defense really, really cares about the ability for them to get access to real-time information. So if you think about any conflict that they're in, the latency that information has dramatic impacts on their operations. So uh, some of the upcoming applications we'll, we'll be talking about include real-time access to intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance data that allows these government organizations to get their same data sets <clears throat> that they're used to using in operations, but delivered to them in real time so that they can better improve the totality of their operations. The uptick in defense spending has been a huge tailwind for us, uh, especially in Canada and in the international markets that are looking for real-time access to data. And, and one last thing, is there any other companies that are offering real-time? Do you have any competition right now? In the real-time data marketplace, there's not a whole lot of companies that are offering their data sets in real time. Uh, the majority of companies today focus on the traditional way of getting their data back, which is downlinking it to a ground site, which might take anywhere from 30 minutes to three hours. So we see ourselves pretty differentiated out there in the market. Okay, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, Mina, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Mina Maitri is the CEO of Kepler Communications.